we are uh, learning now the 15th chapter of Tanya, Perik Tezvov. And just to go over from a minute or two what we learned so far. That the Alter Rebbe, the Balatanya is explaining that there's a difference between a, a tzaddik and a Eved Elikim or Eved Elikim. Eved means you're, you're ready, that's your title. You, a tzaddik already mastered the, the strength to conquer the Eitzahara and to get rid of the Eitzahara. And now he's going higher and higher every day with Kedusha. Doesn't have all these hangups that most of us have. Because he, he neutralized the Eitzahara and he actually transformed the Eitzahara to become a, a, a force of Kedusha. But to do that, you really need a lot of strength. You really need a lot of work and help from Hashem. And it, it, just give you a few examples. You know, tzaddikim, they 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 they're very harsh on their on on, on themselves on their discipline. So the, you know they'll sleep minimum whatever they need to sleep. They'll eat very. Minimum. And they'll do a lot uh, for tshuva, for 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 the, for the tefillah, for prayers, for Am Yisrael. They don't talk much. They're not they're not looking to go anywhere unless they have to go for 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 very important something that's that's necessary, that's very essential. So it's a whole different lifestyle. It's a whole different uh, reality. Okay, so. We're not on that level. That's why the Alter Rebbe wrote to Tanya for people like us who are average. Bainanim. We're in the middle. We could. We have to strive to be better. But we're not tzaddikim. But Hashem wants everyone to fulfill their mission. That's called Oyved Elikim. We're in the middle of the process. We're in the middle of serving Hashem. Like Oyved. We're working on it. It's an ongoing process. an ongoing exercise to fight the Yetzirah and to serve Hashem every day with more meaning, with more strength. Like 99% of, of, of the Jewish people have been doing and doing till today. Comes the 15th chapter of Tanya and says, the Alter Rebbe, in a nice way, he challenges us. And he says, because you have been doing good till now, you have been very righteous and going straight in the right path that enables you and that empowers you now to go to another level to a higher level not to be satisfied where you are so some people they don't want to challenge themselves some people are very complacent and very comfortable where they are they don't want to look into the mirror. And recognize that I'm even a constructive criticism. But a chassid or a, a woman. And a chassidish a chassida, person who wants to be extra benevolent and extra righteous and more humble for Hashem. That's what chassidus and Musa tells us. That you have to go to a, a higher level. That's called Lufnim Mishurat Hadin, going beyond the going beyond the law, the letter of the law, going beyond your duty. You, you, you can fulfill your, your duties, your obligations, and then you can go beyond that. Just give one example. As we know, that Sunday is the Hilula of the, of the Rebbe. So the Rebbe's mandate, the Rebbe's mission was and is to empower all his chassidahs who adhere to his teachings to reach out to others and inspire them. Not to say, I'm comfortable where I am and I don't have to concern myself about another person. That's not chassidahs. 
Chasidus is like chesed. That's the root of the word chasidus. Chesed, kindness is about reaching out to another person. Well, there's no obligation in the Torah, really, that I have to every day go look for people they should put on tefillin or learn Torah or uh, give staka or, 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 or help them with a mezuzah. Figure it out. If you, if you come to me and then you ask me for help, then, okay, even that, we have to take it in consideration. If, I, if I'm obligated to give staka, fine. I can decide who I'm giving, when I'm giving, how I'm giving. But don't put pressure on me. Rebbe puts pressure on us. Says to us, you're not going to be comfortable. You shouldn't be comfortable if you know there's, a, there's Jews in your neighborhood or your community or your city or your country or the whole world. If you could reach them somehow, you could make a difference in their life, then you're obligated to do that. On some level. And the minimum you could do is pray for them. I think I told you this. I, a few weeks, a few months ago, I read an interesting talk that the Rebbe was saying in 1985 about that sometimes you, you, you hear about a situation, a very negative situation about another Jew, and you don't know what to do, and you have no control, you no way of changing it. Like he said, he gave an example. If you hear that, that, if you, that you heard that someone in India when one of those from the Far East uh, joined a cult or, or, or a guru. It's a terrible thing. But what can you do about it? The Rebbe said you could do two things. You could say to Hillem, you could pray for them and give stucca for them and have in mind that Hashem should have Rachmanus on them, that they should wake up and do tshuva. But the fact that it came to your understanding, to your uh, knowledge so you're, to, that you were heard about it, that you were informed about it, means that you have to do something. You can't ignore it. Again, that's the Rebbe's teachings, the Rebbe's position. And I, I don't know if everyone hold, agrees with the Rebbe, but we we surely know that the Rebbe had the best intentions, and as our Rebbe, he we must listen to him and follow his instructions and his teachings so just give you an example about the idea of challenging yourself or growing and moving forward and going out of your comfort zone to do the right thing it's not so simple and al Rebbe here the 15th chapter of Tanya brings it from the Gemara everything I told you when we started to learn at the beginning many months ago the Tanya and the teachings of Hasidus, it all has a source, a reference in the earlier writings of the rabbis. There isn't such a thing that they made it up. The rabbis didn't, the, the tzaddikim of, of, of Chabad or Al Shem Tov or the other tzaddikim, the other rabbis, they didn't make anything up. They elaborated. They revealed to us things that were written in, in certain places, in the Talmud or the Midrash or the Zohar, most people didn't have access to it or didn't find it or didn't understand it. And they were able to reveal and decipher all of that and, and bring it to us to the forefront. We should know that it's a priority. So the Gaal Rebbe brings here from the Gemara. The Gemara says, In Chagiga, there's a difference between someone who learns a hundred times by heart. They used to repeat everything they learned in the in the yeshivas of, of, of the Gemara, of the Talmud. A hundred times or a hundred and one times. That's a very interesting thing. How that, that was the system because it wasn't written down. Everything, everything was written, was learned by heart. If you want to look up the Gemara, it's uh, Gemara Chagiga, page 9b. So the Gemara says that a person who learns and repeats the learning a hundred times, his, his learning, he's called 
He didn't master, uh, he didn't achieve the level of, of being an absolute servant to Hashem. He's still lacking. But if he's learned it 101 times, that's over the top. Now he's called Ovid Alikim. Now he's definitely a servant to Hashem. Now, come on, guys. I don't have the strength to repeat something more than, more than three, four times. I mean, uh, that's, that's, it's, not, it's not an easy thing for me. I would say the maximum, maximum that someone, a normal person can re re repeat something is 10 times. But 100 times, wow. The truth is that we do repeat something 100 times. We dive in every day. And three times a day, we say the Shmon Esrei. And it's the same words. And we've been doing this from uh, the, the, our youth. So we do repeat. But that's in the system. And it says, how does one stay motivated and inspired? Because the words are just ex expressing the love and the fear and the reverence and the feelings that we have towards Hashem. And the feelings is not the same. Every time you dive in and every time you, you, you have a mind, Shivisi Hashem, Lenegdi Summit, that Hashem is in front of you, you're talking to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Almighty God, and He is listening to you. That's what we believe. Otherwise, what are we talking to the walls? God forbid. We believe believe that as busy as Hashem is, he's coming to listen to me. He's making time for me. He's interested in me, which is unbelievable. You can't even get a, a meeting with, 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 a, with a government official, Lahavda, who's a, who's a nobody. They have no time for you. Even to the bank. It took me a, a week to make an appointment now to go to see an officer in the bank. Very important people. They have very big people. Hashem is Baruch, who is the master of the whole creation, and the whole system, and everything that is in existence. He has time that whenever I want, and I, I'll turn to him, he'll make himself available for, for me. Who am I? Malik Allah is Kvaidai. Hashem is everywhere. But, he's, he, but not only is he everywhere, but he also has an interest in whoever, whoever talks to him with sincerity and with humility. He's there for us. So the rabbis tell us that it's not enough to learn a hundred times. You have to learn a hundred and one times. That was, that was the system. That was the custom in the time of the Gemara. <coughs> so it says in the Gemara that, that, that it gives an example that there was a, uh, a donkey uh, ride, a donkey that would take uh, packages, move packages from place, place to place. So for, for going one parasa, let's say a parasa is a, is a kilometer, he would charge, um, no, a, par, a parasa is uh, actually, I think, 10, uh, um, 40 kilometers. So for 40 kilometers, it would be one price, one Zeus. If you want to go 41 kilometers, then it's double. Why is it double? Is I going in an Uber? And, and if I go, uh, I, I want to go one more block, you're going to charge me double? What kind of craziness is that? Yeah, that was the custom. Why? Because since there was a, a, a routine and a, a, regul, a regular, uh, a reg, it was regulated where the ride was. So you want to go the donkey the, and the rider uh, out of the the routine, the route, the route, then you have to, you have to pay more. You have to pay double because you're asking them to do something that, that, that's totally out of their realm. The Gemara uses this example. And the Gemara says, so here you see that if you do something, even a little bit, that extra little block, that let extra little mile, uh, a little, little, another, you're telling the driver to go a little bit further. You already have to pay double. Mm -hmm. Same thing when it comes to learning Torah, when it comes to do mitzvahs, it's not enough that we do it just to, for, for, just to be outside, just to fulfill our obligations. No, 
You have to do it with more strength, with more inspiration. Lishana is teva regilos, to change the nature of your routine, of your habits. And it says, the, the previous Rebbe says, the Rebbe built based a, 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 an entire essay discussing what is Hasidus all about. And the basis is that the previous Rebbe said um, that the whole idea of the of, of Hasidus is to change our nature, to change our habits. So someone who comes along and tells you, I don't have to change. I don't want to become better. I don't want to push myself. I don't want to challenge myself. I'm comfortable where I'm at. That person is not following the instructions of the previous Rebbe and the Rebbe, and the Alter Rebbe, which told us that one of the uh, criteria of being a chassid or a chassidah is that you actually, absolutely must work on yourself. If you have a problem, you have a weakness with anger, you got to work on that to change it. If your, your weakness is lost, you got to work on it. If you're arrogant, you have to work on it, on, on changing it, diminishing it, breaking it. You can't say, I'm, I'm, I'm not changing. I'm, 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 I keep Shabbos, I eat kosher, I put fill in every day. The way I am, that's the way I'm not, I'm not changing for nobody. No. One second, please. Hey, you're not going tomorrow. One second. I like your picture. It's so beautiful. Oh, okay. Huh? So, can you, not sure can, you, can you mute people, please? Whoever has the children there should mute them. Kishana. I don't know. We don't know who she is. Whoever it is should uh, call it. Calls it. Yeah. So, now, till now, I just said to you, yeah, you have to. You have to do this. You have to do that. But how? The Tanya is not just about telling us what to do. It gives us the tools and the information how to do it. Now, now again, there are others, the other people, there's other methods, there's other ideas that will tell you there's different ways to approach it. But we're learning the Tanya. And over here, we're gonna tell, we're gonna learn now what does the Al Rebbe say? What is his method? What he suggests, what he advises us to do that we should be able to change our nature, uh, our habits, and become a better person. I don't think anyone who has an anger problem or an anger issue or a lust or honor or arrogance or, you know, uh, thinks that they're so happy with themselves. I, I'm sure deep down, they would, they would agree, and uh, maybe not to others, or maybe to their therapist, or to their doctor, or to their rabbi, that they would like to be able to be a nicer person, and, and not de have this deficiency, and not have this problem. So he says, here comes the, the, the formula, how to do it. He says, you have to awaken the love for Hashem, by contemplating in the greatness of Hashem, in your brain, Hashem gave you intellect. Hashem gave you a brain to use, to utilize. You have to take time to think about your relationship with Hashem and the greatness of Hashem, how you project it, how you see it. And in Hasidus, there's a lot of... Uh, this, uh, um, explanations how to, to, to go there, how to get it activated. There is a long discussions. That's what Hasidus Chabad is not like other teachings of other Hasidus. Other Hasidus is more or less, it's, it's short and sweet. A question, an answer, 
Anigun, clap your hands, you sing. That's it. Beautiful. It's a beautiful lifestyle, a beautiful way of serving Hashem. But it's not so deep. It's not, it doesn't require a more meditation and it doesn't go into all these details of the two and, and requires you to, 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 to work on yourself to become a better person, a better Jew, a better person. So he says, when you'll take the time, and we spoke about this a few months ago, that the Alter Rebbe says you have to take at least an hour of your time or a half hour or, 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 or a few minutes every day to set aside a few minutes minimum to think about your relationship with Hashem and how Hashem is so awesome and He's the, the master and the CEO and the creator. He was, He is, and He'll always be, like it says in Adoy Noilam. And then to, to bring it to, your, to, you, to yourself personally, say, and what does Hashem expect from me? If I am a good person, I, I, I definitely, uh, Hashem can bless me to become a better person, to, be, to, to, to work on myself, to surely grow. Torah and the mitzvot and character uh, traits and my attributes and my emotions. Everyone has good days and, and I don't want to say bad days, but tough days, rough days. We all go through that. And especially if you're married, you know that uh, in the beginning, everything is wonderful. Everything is beautiful. Everything is fireworks. But after five years, 10 years, 20 years, it's not so simple. People change. People evolve. People get involved in other things. And it could hurt a relationship. Now, some people... Whatever, they choose to do whatever they want. They're selfish. They say, I'm not changing. I'm this is who I am and I don't care. And you don't like me. That's the, that's the way it is. But we're talking about how it should be. The proper way. The proper way is that a person knows that his negative traits are coming from the eight Sahara. The negative traits are not coming from the godly soul. They're coming from the wrong side. Anger, loss, ego, arrogance, greed. All these things don't come from the right place and they lead to bad consequences. To the wrong, it, 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 By the end, there are conse negative consequences. So it can't be good. So you have to attack it before it escalates. Most, I believe, most divorces... Could, uh, could could have been avoided if they or and most mo, most arguments and, and and disputes if you don't let it escalate. Of course, if you let it escalate, then the human being you 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 start getting more and more upset and and more uh, aggressive and more angry, and both parties are now attacking each other. It becomes like a war. So each one of us should take these words of the Alter Rebbe, the Balatanya, and take it seriously. And to know that by us uh, uh, awakening love for Hashem, literally, yes, you have to work on loving Hashem, like it says in the Shema. The Shema is the formula and the, like the constitution of Torah, of humanity, of Every person's existence. You want to be a better person. You want to be happy in life. You want to work on yourself to change for the better you, and to have the strength to do it and be inspired. Start working on loving Hashem. When you will awaken yourself, love for Hashem, like it says in the Shema, you have to Hashem you will see how everything turns out good. A person who's full of love smiles. A person who's full of love is happy. A person who's full of love is content. A person who's full of love is positive. So we're going to go wrong. Even if someone wants to bother you, 
But if you're in a good mood, you're gonna you're not you're, you're not gonna get bent out of shape. You're gonna you're gonna not allow it to escalate. How do you awaken the love for Hashem? There are many many pages in Hasidus to, that describe and explain to us how to do it. Over here, the Alter Rebbe says it in two lines. You have to contemplate the greatness of Hashem in your intellect, in your in your mind, and this will arouse in you. The feeling you have hidden love already in your neshama. You just have to activate it. Now, if you don't know how to activate it, so we'll talk about it more, God willing, on Sunday, because that is a practical and, and it's, it, is, it is an issue. But if it's in the Shema, it means it's practical. If it's in the Shema, it's written in the Shema, that means it, it is available and accessible to every Jew because Hashem would not tell us to do something that we cannot handle. You just got to take the time and the effort and dedicate yourself to do it. But not to leave the class with, with unanswered questions, there are three basic components to love Hashem. One is, a, is like a selfish love. You think about all the good things that you have in your life and who's responsible for it. You don't give yourself credit. If, you, if you're able to feel good and you have your health, don't take it for granted. And your wife and children, don't take it for granted. The many sick people, God forbid. Yesterday I was sitting with a friend of mine. He's 68 years old, very successful guy, a good man in the community, and he's fighting cancer. So, and he has a lot of faith. So don't, no one should take health. If you have your health, you have to love Hashem and thank Hashem and give gratitude for everything you have. The second way of loving Hashem is by actively learning Torah and doing mitzvahs. That is the tools that will inspire you and continuously give you the inspiration to love Hashem more and more. If a person says, I love Hashem, but I, I'm not, I'm not, not going to learn, I'm not learning Torah and not doing mitzvahs, or he's doing it very, very minimum or shallow, that's not a deep love. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I'll get it for you. Which one? Tell me. Third, third level. Me. Third component. Let me ask you something what you mean. The third component is to pray and to ask Hashem to help you reveal and activate love and then to feel more positive and to feel more Hashem's presence and that you want to be a better person to what you want the Hashem should help you to 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 be able to reach your goals you have to make some goals so these are the practicalities of the three things uh, how three steps how a person could truly love Hashem and and awaken their love and give him strength to be positive and to uh continue to be positive for other people as well. Have a good Shabbos, everyone. And we'll see you, God willing, Sunday. And a good Chodesh. Shabbat Shalom. All the best. Thank you.